News Dump. Wellity, wellity, wellity. Okay. All right. You're doing some sort of variation of pig Latin there. You get some goo Latin going on. I guess. Uh, before we get started here with News Dump Mac, we don't have too much information right now. We'll have more next week. But this upcoming trivia that was set for April 17th, next Wednesday, postponed. Yep. Oh, out the window with the baby's bathwater. What's that saying go? Well, I'll throw it out. No, you nailed it. You yeah. got it. Crush yeah. that. Uh, yeah, unfortunate, but we'll be back. Don't we'll let be the baby back. Go down the drain. <laughs> News dump. Our March Madness has wrapped. Thank you to everyone who came out and voted throughout the first round, the second round. Sweet 16, Elite Eight, Final Four. I know all these sports phrases, yeah, you man. you got them all there, huh? Got them all. That. Who is our champion? Our champion is uh, the, I don't know how to, uh, how to gas him up, I guess. I was going to have some sort of adjective there. Our champion is Thanos. Thanos yeah, from I the MCU. I would say the odds on favorite. If you went into this, like, who is your Scotty Scheffler right now? You would say Thanos. Yeah, you probably would have guessed him or Joker to win it. That was yes. in the, uh, an Elite Eight matchup. Um, he beats out Hans Landa from Inglorious Bastards, who Goo and I both had as our, yeah. our champion. But there's something to be said about the longevity of Thanos, too. He, he, was, he popped up in the movies, or at least the idea of him, in 2012. That was seen all the way through in 2019. So he had a seven, eight year window there where Thanos was on the people's minds for anyone that liked uh, the Marvel movies. On top of that, he sort of probably still lingers out there. I wouldn't doubt that we see some sort of version of him uh, in the future, considering everything Marvel is doing. Um, but a very fitting winner to our March Magnus. Couple of Magnus notes. Shout out to Hans Landa. He was the runner up, of course. The seven seeded Scar making it all the way to the final four. The biggest margin of victory was Thanos at 92% in the first round over the spot from Spider Verse. And the tightest was also in the first round, a tie between the Vulture and Mr. Smith, which did result in a tiebreaker. Mr. Smith went on to the second round. Also, Hans Landa beat Hannibal Lecter in the Elite Eight, 51 to 49. Yeah, Landa, Landa, however you pronounce it, and Thanos had the Just two. Don't call me late for dinner. <laughs> Had the two toughest journeys to get to yeah. the final four in championships. So it was fitting that they were the last two left. News dump. Breaking news just before we got on this stream. And that is finally, it is happening. Something that I said to you last year. I told you we just need to buy enough merch, get enough tickets to that last movie that came out last summer, show enough interest in this comic book. And according to THR, the Hollywood Reporter, we are getting a live action. Rated R, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie that is The Last Ronin. Gil, this is great news. This is great news. Mm -hmm. I uh, I half expected this once they announced the video game yes. based on this uh, comic book last year. Um, I'm sure that video games would be awesome. I think that video game comes out next year, I want to say. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what the data is uh, set on this. I don't know if they've even talked about it yet, but... Uh, the premise of this of this story is awesome. If you don't yes. know it at home, essentially, there's one turtle left of the four, and you don't know who that turtle is at the beginning of the story. And on top of it, the turtle is using all four weapon sets from the four turtles to honor his brothers, and that adds to the mis uh, mystery of it all. So pretty intriguing story that's that's for sure yeah not to get too far into what the story is but it does go over the deaths of the other brothers the deaths of his father how you know he's able to live so long how he's able to grow so big i love this story i'm so excited to see it and like i said man it was just a matter of time and they also know with anything tmnt you only have to sell so many tickets because idiots like me are just going to buy the merch. And that's how they make their money. They made over a billion dollars in merch last year. 
Here is my one um, drawback to this is mm -hmm. I think they're going to have a really hard time getting this movie right tonally. Mm -hmm. To me, wow, it, should, it, should, it should operate in, in not in the same world, but in the same realm as the Batman. That's what it, this, yes. this movie should feel like. And I think they're just going to have a hard time getting there. If they get there, it's going to be awesome. I just don't know if they can. I also love the fact that I believe that you could have possibly done the book in PG-13. Like you could have found a way to still have the ultra violence toned down a little bit to reach that bigger audience. But they said, fuck it. We're yeah. doing rated R. We're going to do this. And also, I mean, credit to the R-rated comic book movies we've seen in the last decade. Um, we can thank Logan. We can thank Deadpool for Deadpool. this. And especially Deadpool and Wolverine's going to make a billion dollars so this is probably in part why we're able to do this r-rated uh, they also probably tournament. looked at who are the people that are buying the merch for this franchise yeah. it's the 40 to 50 year olds that grew up on it in the 80s yeah it's probably the people we're probably right on the edge so like 35 yeah. to 50 or is the demographic for this and that's the perfect demographic for an r-rated comic book movie and this story is a continuation from the original comics that came out in the early 80s. So what you can do is you can retell a bit of that with the R-rated feel that the comic actually had. Now, the 1990 movie actually did do a good job of, you know, for being PG, tell that story, but they could only do so much. It is also very interesting to see that they're, they're walking quite the tightrope here, yeah. having or currently in production is the sequel to last year's TMNT Mutant Mayhem, which is a PG kids oriented uh, property. Also a television now, show too. Yeah. yeah. And now they're going to be doing a, a completely adult oriented version of turtles, which is fun. And I guess that's probably the best thing about the turtles is yeah. that wide range that they can do and do well, both uh, R rated and PG. I was watching the 1990s movie the other day and I love how nonchalantly Casey Jones murders Shredder. <laughs> Shredder falls from the top of a building into a garbage truck, and Casey Jones just goes, whoops, <laughs> and murders the man. If the police show up, what is he going to say? Oh, the turtles on the top of the building threw right. him off. I'm right. sorry. What did you just say? Yeah. And you are who now? covered in blood, and you have weapons on you. <laughs> News dump. <laughs> Oh, a leak from CinemaCon. A cup leak, if you will. And this was from Cinema... Who is the, the person that tweeted this out? It was like something movie podcast. I want to give them credit because that's like us. It's I us. don't know. You know what's funny is I came across this yeah. like the moment it was tweeted or, or uh, put out on TikTok. And I was like, I don't understand what the leak is here. Someone fucking with me? And then like eight hours later, I was sent it by a couple of friends uh, with the cowl thing. And I was like, oh, we're finally seeing the mask. Head. We're seeing yeah. the mask finally. And I I'm think like, the right, disappointing right. thing here. Now, the cowl looks great. Don't get me wrong. The disappointing thing here is that they're going to keep the sleeves. Yeah, I, I didn't think we were going to get rid of the sleeves once we saw that. I costume. thought there was a chance that they weren't going to have the sleeves. OK, fair enough. This it's, confirms it, the sleeves. I, I uh it's going to be pretty cool to see this live action. Yes. I just, I feel like it's going to be one of those things that once he takes the mask off, we're never going to see it again during the movie. We'll get um, some more X-Men at the end of this podcast. Goose dump. <laughs> Not called goose dump. I'm sorry. Freudian <laughs> slip there, guys. RDJ is A-OK -okay if the MCU says to him, you'll want to come back. <laughs> you yeah, had way too Esquire? much fun doing that. That was a lot of fun for Goo. This well, is a I'm goose dump. Junior said that he would happily return to the MCU as Iron Man. It's too integral as a part of my DNA. That role chose me. And look, I will always say never, ever bet against Kevin Feige. It is a losing bet. He's the house. He will always win. <sighs> I am. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to ride the wall on this one. Goo. Ride the fence. Toe in, toe out. Don't get hurt. Uh, I would love Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man to continue on perpetually. However, like if it's a forcocked away, they bring him back in, back in. I, I'm not going to like that. And as I just said above talking about Thanos, like it's sort of inevitable as Thanos is yeah. that 
all these characters are going to come back at some point. I just, I don't, I don't want them to touch the Infinity Saga. Look, you know? I would like his voice back as an AI. I would take that. I don't want him in any more of the movies. And it's not to say that I don't love the character, but like mm -hmm. you just said, you bring him back, you cheapen two of the best comic book movies of all time. The comic book run that was 20 years, that death was awesome. So good. So, uh, so emotional. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, like it, as a fandom, uh, we, we deserved that moment, Robert Downey Jr., to finish the MC, not the MC, the Infinity Saga. And I just don't know if you could ever find the right moment to bring them back. They'll find a moment to bring them back. I don't know if it'll ever be the right one. I also still love the fact that he's all in on this. Like, he's never going to back away from being Iron Man, from being in these movies. And he deserves credit for doing that. Yeah. And I also think, uh, Iron Man will be forever changed the way he's written. They're going to write him as that billionaire, billionaire playboy philanthropist that Robert Downey Jr. kind of brought to the character because he wasn't really that character before. And so Robert Downey Jr. was so good in, in that role that they, he fundamentally changed the character that is Iron Man, Tony Stark. News down. Uh, uh? He got the trailer for Joker, Fale Adu. And let me start off by saying this, like what you like. More like Joker, Fale a poo, you know? Because this looks like a real piece of shit, goo. This does not look good. And listen, I didn't like the first movie. Yeah. I dealt with it because uh, Joaquin Phoenix was tremendous. Um, uh, it, it just, if you go back and listen to what Goo, Goo and I's main criticisms were, it was this one foot in, one foot out on Arkham, Bruce Wayne, the Batman stuff, the Joker lore. And they were trying to have their cake and eat it too, and we didn't care for that. And they're doing the exact same thing here. That's Goo. all this one is here. And my big question is, if you have Harley Quinn and he's at Arkham or just at a psych ward, why isn't she a doctor? Was she already a doctor and she's already fallen into a bit of, you know, what's going on here? You could do mad love. You could do mad love. Todd Phillips was quoted last week saying that uh, this is not going to be really a musical, but it, that music is going to be central to the movie, which most good movies have that in it. Um, and he also said it's going to be a lot like the first movie. And I don't like any of those things he's saying. I just don't understand why you would go out and make this splash signing, this free agency get of Lady Gaga and not utilize Gaga in her best way. Instead of building the system around the pieces, they're trying to make Gaga fit into the system. And I don't think that's the right way to use her. It's like they signed Shaq and said, you are going to shoot three pointers. <laughs> yeah, take a bunch of elbow jumpers like your KG. Uh, I, 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 I'm just bummed. I'm bummed that we've been talking about this movie now for two or three years and hoping that Gaga was going to have kind of full reigns over the music and, and that type of stuff. And now it appears as though there will be no original Gaga stuff in this. It'll just be, I don't know. It'll be a pile of shit is what Did it'll you be. see the two of them walking down the steps and kicking their legs? Cause that was from the first movie. Yeah, I, I don't. I'm I am I guess I'm not out on this movie because I've been looking forward to it for so long, but I am no yeah. longer looking forward to it. I could imagine Todd Phillips walking into like the big studio, he hands over the script and they say, Do you have the stairway scene? And he's like, Yes. And then he goes and he writes a new one. Like, guys, don't worry, it's in there. They're gonna kick their legs. Oh God. News down. Hi. I live among the creatures of the night. Finally, Laura Branigan. Maxine trailer. <laughs> this looks pretty good. Yeah, it does. This will be uh, concluding the trilogy that started a couple years ago with X. Mm -hmm. Pearl was the second movie. This will now be the third. Um, it looks, I don't, what's the word? It looks cool. This movie looks mm -hmm. cool is what this movie looks like. Yeah, and along with Tarzan Boy, I will always say, Songs that have chanting, you got me. Tarzan Boy is an all-timer. It, oh. it gets oh. 
gets the boys going every time. Yeah. Um, I still haven't seen X nor Pearl, so I guess I, I got those two movies to watch before this movie comes out in July, I think, or June. News down. Also from CinemaCon, got some news on Mickey 17. That was our second most anticipated movie of the year. It has been moved to next January, where movies go to die. It is described as a sci-fi comedy, which concerns me. I don't know why, but putting those two together doesn't always do it for me. It follows yep. a man who gets cloned over and over and over after he dies on suicide missions. Bong Joon-ho casts Robert Pattinson because he has a crazy look in his eyes. Can't argue that. And one clone is like an evil brother who is out of control. So it sounds like the premise of this movie, and obviously this is based on a book, I believe. Um, yeah, Mickey is, Seven, right? Yeah, is that uh, Pattinson's character is cloned and sent on these suicide missions because he's whatever, so good at whatever. Amanda Waller uh, just takes yeah. a handful of Robert Pattinson's, and, and says, then I guess where the hijinks or where the the big uh, action that springs springs forth the plot of this movie is one of these clones is going to survive the suicide mission and come back, and now there's going to be two Pattinsons. So we'll see how this goes. I love Pattinson. I love Bong Joon. So maybe maybe this will be great. But definitely, this has gone from looking forward to to cautiously optimistic. News down. <laughs> John Wick is set to return. That, of course, in the ballerina movie, the first trailer at CinemaCon included a ton of sword action sword. sequences featuring Ana de Armas and a glimpse of Norman Ridas. Uh, prayers up for a sword cutting off the dress of Ana de Armas. Like Zorro? Um, yes, exactly like that in Catherine Zeta-Jones. Um, Catherine Zeta Jones <laughs> dips beneath the lasers. They are smartly setting this between the events of John Wick three and four. Yeah. So Wick being around makes sense, and you won't be like, "Why is John Wick around?" Oh, we can still say that. We yeah, can still we ask can, that question. I guess we. I guess we could. <laughs> um, I wonder how much he's actually going to be involved in it, but he is definitely going to be involved. One scene. Let's just hope for one scene. Like he pops up, says, "Hey." And then gets out of there. That was me. It wasn't John Wick, guys. He pops in with a new dress for Anna Darmus and then leaves. I was like, he pops in wearing a new dress. And he's like, what do you guys you think? Want, you want mine? He was dead. <laughs> I uh, don't really understand what's going on here. This is in Paste Magazine. Sonic producer, I don't have a name, but he said that the films, the Sonic films, are going to become Avenger-level events. <laughs> Big, exciting stories that have a lot of different characters. Those sound like studio notes. So the only thing I think he's trying to say here yeah. is they're just building. There's a lot of world building going on in the Sonic universe. They have a show coming out, a yes. second, a third movie, or, or a third movie, and I think maybe even two shows coming out. Um, so they're definitely building out the world here. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't. I don't see how I guess because Sonic will team up with his pals to defeat like a big enemy is Avengers level. Here's the but issue in terms of the, of, of the people watching these movies and going to see these movies. No one's ever going to think it's Avengers level. Here's the thing, though, is I have like a tangible feel on what Sonic is and who the characters are. Mm -hmm. But beyond Sonic, Tails, and I kind of know Knuckles. I don't know any of the other characters. Yep. I would agree to agree with you there. Um, maybe that's a good thing. They can do whatever the fuck they want and it won't affect how we see these characters. I think the biggest thing though, is like Robotnik is mm, not a great villain. And how long are they going to go on with Robotnik? And I don't know any other villains in the Sonic universe. So. I thought Knuckles was a villain. He was a villain in the last one. Well, he's going to be a good guy now. He could become a villain again. I think one of them was voiced by Hayden Christensen, and he's green. Oh, maybe that's in the next one? I don't know what the fuck's going on. Knuckles was Idris Elba. Knuckles was Idris Elba. But I think in one of the cartoons, like Sonic Beyond? Oh, oh, you're. I thought you were talking about... Uh, in, no, uh, I'm just... I'm trying to think through here, because my son sure. always says to me, my three-year-old is... 
like, hey, can you buy me more Sonic characters? And I'm like, you have Sonic and Tails, and I don't know any of the other ones. So no. Yeah, that's, uh, I, I would say 90% of the people that are aware of Sonic fall into that same category. There's dumb. <laughs> Looking like someone is picking up a marginopoly on board game movies or video game. I'm going to stick with what I just said. I like it. Margot Robbie's Lucky Chat Production Company is producing a Monopoly movie. I don't know. I don't know where you begin with a Monopoly movie. I, I would say the first hour should just be people passing go and getting $200. I just don't know how you get the idea of that game and turn it into a script. I well, really don't. The idea don't. of the game is that you want to get Boardwalk, right? Right. So is the is this game going to be played in the real world where there's just a bunch of real estate battles amongst real people? So it's it. Boardwalk. And what is the other blue one? Park that Place. you want? What is it? Park Place. Yeah, you want those. And then you want the four railroads, right? Four railroads are nice. That's a good that's a good, good idea. For so you're sure. saying that you can win without getting the railroads. No, I think that's I think one of the easiest things to get is the railroads. I haven't played Monopoly in a long time. Same same i i don't I want to now, actually though. the last time i played monopoly was on uh playstation 4 virtually during covid with friends you know what this movie is kind of doing its job i want to play monopoly now go <laughs> a secondary announcement yeah um is that her production company is also producing a movie based on the sims now that yes. i get that i can understand about it a couple how, weeks ago yeah yeah i understand how you could create a movie based on the sims the the monopoly thing is really rattling my brain here i don't care no. what is this uh so we got news maybe a month ago that ryan coogler's next movie maybe two months ago would be starring michael b jordan's there so they're reuniting and it's going to be a vampire movie uh we just got an announcement this week that Haley steinfeld oh, has been cast as his girlfriend yes as like the co-star in this movie uh, of the vampire thriller. So now it's become a sexy vampire thriller because both leads very sexy. And they a big, big, big Haley Steinfeld fan. News down. Ryan Gosling set to host SNL this week. I'm actually pretty excited. He is a great host. He has been a part of some of my favorite scenes in the past decade. Numero uno, Papyrus. Papyrus was an all timer for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, Gosling is so talented. He can do whatever he wants. This will be one of the better episodes of SNL we've seen in a couple of years. So that's that's that. He was also in a great scene where he still believes in Santa and he made Santa dance for him. It's a it's pretty good. I like it. News dump. We got episode five, which was Say my name. I don't say know. Say my name. Say my name. When, when no, no one, one is, is around, around you, say oh, baby, say I like love Asian you. Accent, you ain't running game. Say my you name. Do. Say my name. You, you do that acting kind of shady. Accent. Ain't calling me baby. Better say my name. That music video, by the way, was awesome. It was, it was all different colored rooms. It would cut. And I believe Jesse Child still had four members at the time. Mm -hmm. So in the episode, <laughs> a lot happened, but definitely the highlight and maybe the highlight of the entire five episodes so far would be the last seven to eight minutes yeah so um they've been somewhat building this storyline mm -hmm. that magneto and rogue were once lovers and i do not care for that i think it's a stretch to say the least and that comes to a head in this episode with the love triangle of those two and gambit um I just don't care for the Magneto Rogue stuff. And it was a lot of what this episode was about. Uh, the final, yeah, five to 10, somewhere, whatever the length is yes. um, of this episode is fucking awesome. We get a quick uh, scene between Gene and Cable as well, which I which I liked. I was but, like, if you don't want any spoilers, just turn it off right now. We have like three minutes left and the rest of this episode sucks. Yeah. Uh, the sacrifice that Gambit makes is fucking cool and honestly makes him way more powerful than I thought he ever was. I also think that final scene, even though we've only gotten five episodes, I think I'm willing to say this is better than the original X-Men show. And it's because of the animation. The original X-Men show 
was it was spastic. Limited. It was it was spastic. limited. And it was it all over the place. Much. Like it, it could. That's true. Because of the animation, it could. Like we've already gotten four great action scenes in this, and the one in here stands out as it looks so good. It yeah. looks awesome. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna disagree with you saying this is. This might have. Uh, so are you saying like it surpassed the heights of the original? Is that essentially what you're saying? I just think the original one could only do so much with mm -hmm. the animation budget, whereas this sure. one has given us some amazing action scenes. And finally, and I believe you and I have talked about this either on the air or off, about how the voice acting in this, you know, it's not always up to some of the other animated shows that we've seen, but in this episode, it stood out as really hitting with me and i think it was lenore zane as rogue especially her final line of sugar i can't feel you that's pretty good right <laughs> i don't think she's been great though no but i think this episode she was great okay, leading up to this enough. episode i thought that her voice sounded too old but in her this and one Wolverines have I sounded think it hit like in this one they're two of the uh, of the original yes. voice actors, but her and Wolverines have sounded like someone doing an impression of the original yes. voice actors. I will say um, that Matthew Watterson has been good throughout the whole run. He's Magneto. Yeah, yeah no, he's been good. I just I don't care for that storyline, and it was so central to this episode. Um, to your point about like this maybe being better than the original, it it might be. It might be. I I guess we'll have to see how the season ends and like where they're going. Also, is Cable talking about Sinister or is he talking about Apocalypse? I don't know who he's talking about. And I also love that scene, too, of her being like, they fixed your eyes. Yeah. 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 No, that was that was a nice I, little touch. Um, scene. Yeah, I like that. And also, I think by the end of this year, let's start tossing some theories out. I think Wolverine is going to be head of the house. Because so far, he's done nothing. So Magneto's probably not dead, though, right? That's... No, but I think maybe they give him a rest until maybe the final episode. Professor X is eventually going to come back. I hope they yeah. wait until season two. Uh, Storm, I think we'll get her powers back by the end of the season. But I wouldn't mind them giving a little bit more to Wolverine. And him running a household, that's like Mr. Dad. <laughs> Mrs. Mom. Mr. Mom? Mr. Mom. There we go. Um, yeah, like I had said when we talked about this a couple weeks ago, I'm hoping for... Um, both uh, a conclusion to this season and some withstanding yeah. uh, stuff going forward. So you're right. I think by the end of this, we'll get a tease for professor X storm. will have her powers back, mm -hmm. but I'm trying to think of like the hierarchy in the X-Men uh, obviously Scott and storm. Oh, we're going to get some more teammates too. How about that? Yeah, We got nightcrawler in this episode, which was cool. Mm -hmm. um, Scott and storm are definitely one, a one B in terms I think of Scott like, leaves charge. I think yeah, Scott so that, leaves. they're kind of teasing that type of stuff. Yeah. Um, but if like Scott leaves, does Gene leave, or is there? Does he go off and like try to make himself right? With Madeline, I, I think he goes with Madeline. Hmm. So he'll be out on that fucking on Genosha yeah. there. Mm -hmm. That'll be interesting. Madeline Pryor, I'd do anything for her. You're saying Madeline Pryor, carrot sign facing over Gene Gray for sure, for sure. She goes. One has the ponytail. Wants. You're you're going with the non ponytail. I'm with you. I'm going with the emo one. Yeah, but yeah, I love this show. I love yeah, it. Even, it's a great show. Even at its even at its slowest during the 20 minutes, I'm I'm still intrigued. I'm still in. Yeah. How many episodes is this season? Is it eight? Ten, I believe. Ten. All right. So we got five left then? Yes. Okay. Three three yes. to five left. So this will be this will be exciting. I also I wish that Magneto's final words to that little uh sore boy there, he said to him, <laughs> Tell Cyclops I was right. <laughs> News up. Fallout is is it on Prime right now or is it coming to Prime? Came out last night. Uh, this is the uh, series based on the video game series, the Fallout games. I think there's like five Fallout games. Um, Amazon Prime currently has a ninety three percent and eighty seven percent, and I'll accept that because all eight episodes are actually out. Goo, they released the whole season at once, yeah. um, and it sounds like I uh, I've gotten a couple texts from people that really liked the video games saying mm -hmm. they love the first couple episodes of the show. So uh, that doesn't mean anything to me because I never played the video games, but it seems like this is going to be a, maybe a show worthwhile watching um, on, on another prime show. Goo, I finished invincible. Oh, I'd, I'd like you to finish it 
I um, haven't started it, so no. Um, disappointing. Disappointing oh, season. Okay. Disappointing season. News down. <laughs> Civil War comes out this weekend. Yes, I have seen the movie. And do I like it? I don't know. I don't know if I do. I, I We had a brief conversation the other day about this. And you sort of alluded to this point, but I read online that this is going to be the most decisive, uh, divisive, divisive movie divisive. of the year because every person that watches this movie is going to have a different experience with it because it plays a lot with uh, sort of current events going on in this country and in your sort current of, views. But it's almost apolitical in the fact that you don't know who's on what side during the entire movie. This. But that's why everyone's going to have a completely different experience because they're going to project their own views on it. Much like James Bond, there's no time to die, when in fact there is a ton of time to die because the movie was three hours long. I believe this movie was mistitled, and it was only titled Civil War to get people in the door because it mm. should have been called like Reporter Road Trip or something like that. <laughs> Writing on the road. Yeah, just right. No, oh, they're, they're war photographers. Like, okay. this movie has so little to do with the American Civil War. <laughs> Not the original. I'm saying, like, the future one that they're talking about. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, that's uh, really hard to wrap your mind around, considering what the movie was teasing. And then so once you wrap your mind around that. It's more of a thinker that, than anything else. I was going to say, once you wrap your mind around that, kind of predictable to what might happen to some of these characters. Okay. All right. I don't know if it's I'm not gonna bad. It's not bad. Yeah. I'm just fucking confused. Give, give me a Roddy T score pred prediction. Ooh. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> wow. I don't know, actually. Like, it could go either way. So I haven't seen it, but based on yes. what you're saying and based on what I've read, this reeks of like an 80 85 Although, critic and like um, yes. 55 60 audience i will say though on uh metacritic it's still like a 75 so it might do pretty well okay so maybe like an 85 90 critic score then. it's not a bad movie it's very well crafted the character is very well acted and uh i believe that we're gonna have a new uh a new uh thing for the octagon it's gonna be the nonagon now and um what we're gonna add to it because when Jesse Plemons enters a movie, the movie becomes at least 50% better. Yeah. yeah. And what I would like to introduce to our nonagon is when life gives you Plemons, you make Plemonade. So where does the non come from? Nine. As opposed to octagon, it's a nonagon. Okay, so what is the th what is the thing we're adding to the nonagon? What is what when is life gives you plemons, you make plemonade. That's gonna be that long. Yes. So we should just call it plemonade. 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 Yeah, it's plemonade. What in this movie made it a lot better? That's sort of just Max Credit Union. No, no, it's so like it's the movie's this, density. and then out of nowhere, it's this. So what a moment. The event. Yes. A moment. What was the event? So it's that more like Snatch Tent. A little bit. Don't, <laughs> don't fucking step on my stuff, man. You gotta, you gotta make that shirt. When life gives you plemons, make plemons plemonade. Make plemonade. Yeah. And then you just put his big old face right there. Yeah, it's good. No, use the Lemonheads logo, but with mm -hmm. Jesse Plemons. Yeah. Plemons like, think, heads. About, think about Game Night. Game mm -hmm. Night, solid comedy. Mm -hmm. But someone made Plemonade. They've never had a sale where if you buy three bags of Tostitos, you get an extra bag. How is that profitable for free to lay? That might be the best joke of all time. It's so good. I don't know why, too. Um, he has since slimmed down a little bit, but Ch Chubby Jesse Plemons made that so much better, knowing he just like stayed at home and probably eats and drinks by himself all the time. It was fucking perfect. I'm so proud of myself. I did it. I didn't even need your help. We didn't even need to fucking talk it out. I did it by myself. I'll wait for, I'll wait for the shirt. Okay. <laughs> All right. Check us out at the top of next week. I don't know what we're doing, but we'll figure something out. Try we'll make Plemonade. Promise me you'll watch one episode of Invincible. It, we'll it doesn't make sense for the Mac and Goo movie book club program. I mean, I'll let you not review it. it. 
I'll let you talk about it. Maybe we'll do a what have you been watching lately? I haven't seen anything else though. So okay. well, I don't Civil know. I just talked about Civil War. <laughs> That's all you had to say. You know, I can cut this and we'll just put it in the other episode. There you go. All right. <laughs> so get ready to hear this again next week. All right. Sounds News good. up. Thank <laughs> you.